so that success and sinfulness have become synonymous. That if you want to be a success, then you've got to learn how to embrace some element of sin. It's, it's, it's a poor witness when we can worship together but not work together. Amen. Where we can come up here and lift up holy hands, but when it's time to put our hands to the plow, I don't fool with church people. <laughs> We, we, we'll, we'll come in here and worship, and we'll sing songs of praise, but when it comes to start really getting some stuff done that can glorify God with other believers, oh, our tolerance level is, oh, sit there. Stop. All you got to do is just come to any ministry meeting outside of worship. <laughs> into a sacred place and we put the expectations of the world on the church and then our tolerance le Amen. level is so where you learn that at? <laughs> Why are you acting like that? Oh, I, I can't. I, I can't. <laughs> because in the world they pay me better than to do this. See, but we've got to be willing to take on the criticism because we've been extended grace. Right. And that grace will give us the ability to work with one another. Because I'm not working with you based off of the world this thing, but off of the eternal. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Amen. I mean, that's why I always get excited when we worship really hard before I start the word. And after a while, y'all should catch a clue. <laughs> Get your shout in early. <laughs> it's so important that we understand that grace has been given to us to get along with one another to show the world what Jesus died for. Can I say that one more time? See, now that we're saved, mercy hit our case. But we've been given access to grace. But that grace is designed in order to show the world what Jesus died for, which is the church. Why is it that the world is shining better than the church? See, Jesus came the first time for the world. The next time, he's coming for the church. So shouldn't this be something worth him coming back for? Now that we're saved, we should start something that he wants to come back for. Yes. Right. Oh. CJ, I think one of the biggest issues, and this is all Alan, the same pastor, the same Bible. <laughs> but I think the reason why it's taken 2,000 years for him to come back, because I think he was just simply going to do a U-turn. Mm. I think the reason why it's taking him so long is he's like, I'm not coming back for that. <laughs> I died for it the first time. And they need to act like I died for it. Yeah. 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 But we've been given grace to get along so that we can build something that proves that it was worth him dying. We should start something that shows the world that he's something. When the world looks at the church, it should scratch his head and say, how did they do that? Yeah. They didn't qualify for that. They didn't earn that. But grace should go before us to the point that it's unmerited. But it's proven that it's favor. Yeah. But in order to do that, we've got to invite criticism. We've got to prove that their unbelief in us doesn't mean that we can't get it done. We should build biblically-based businesses by biblical entrepreneurs. We should build schools that are run off of biblical principles in order to rear up another generation that gives glory to God. We should have biblically-based churches run by real believers. Amen. <laughs> 
not world folk running the church. But folks who know that they started something to the glory of God. The church catches a lot of criticism because we're called to be a crowd of people whose only connections to one another is Christ and Christ alone. There's no reason why an entrepreneur should be sitting next to a construction worker, sitting next to a chef, sitting next to a government worker, sitting next to a principal, sitting next to a plumber, sitting next to UPS, sitting next to a social worker. And this group should be able to produce anything cohesive. But when the world looks at what we are made of and see what we end up producing, they'll criticize it at first. But when grace steps in, when that unmerited favor kicks in, they have no choice but to glorify God and His name. We're saved, so we want to start something. Something that lets the world know that God loves them. That sin can't stop them. And that it's only through the grace of God and the peace that it provides from sin that they too can start something. As I close, I'm just curious. Do you want to start something? Amen. No, really. Do, do you want to start something? Or will sin have you on a perpetual repeat cycle? We're all we're doing is using and utilizing the church in order to absolve us from something that Christ did before we were born. I'll say that one more again. We're, we're only using this opportunity of being saved in order to keep rehashing something that God settled through Christ on Calvary's cross. See, if you don't start something new, the only thing you've got is to repeat what was old. If you don't replace the actions that led you to sin, guess what? You'll be a saved sinner. Instead of a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Yeah, this one wasn't a big shower. We've done this for the last two weeks. It's my job today. To say, start something. Get active in glorifying His name. And everything that you do, what comes out of your mouth, somehow should get credit. It should prove that you're free from what was. Even if what was was last night. Amen. Yeah, I told, you, I told you, if you wake up, oh, I didn't die. In. That's enough. Nothing is the perfect platform for the possibilities of God. But you got to start something that desires to transform lives. So you gotta be obedient. He just wants you to do what he said. Start something that puts you on a regimen to keep following his word no matter what. I dare you to try it for seven days. Seven days, find, find one word out of the word of God. Just one. Not all 66 books, just one word. I will live and not die. And every time fear comes in saying this is going to take you out, you are just obedient like, nah, I'm going to live. I ain't going to die. Every time something tries to get you off course, thinking that you're going to revert, nah, I'm going to live. Yeah. And not die. Find one word and just be obedient to it. Now, Commercial break, caveat. Whatever word you desire to take me up on this challenge for, the enemy is going to do everything to get you to not be obedient. Did you hear that? Now, can I tell you the other secret behind that? Is that everything I've ever preached that you've heard, it's been his job to make sure you never get obedient to it. So the attacks that you've always gone through when you've been here have been because God said that you didn't have to. 
Did you catch that? Start something. I would just say something that brings glory to the same. That transforms lives. And be willing to get criticized. Let somebody say, you're a fool for believing. So, so you can't start nothing subtle. Our God's too big just to be subtle. Right. You got to say, you know what? That loan is going to come to fulfillment this week. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, God. I'm going to get a clean bill of health this week. Amen. Amen. It's going to be mine this week. So you got to be willing to be criticized. I need them to go here. Start something. Because your God's big enough now that you're saved. Because you've been saved for a reason. And if you do it, he bring glory to his name. So it's up to him to do it. Some of y'all didn't even think you'd have a job and look at you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some, some of you all shouldn't still be able to pay the rent or the mortgage. But look at you. Some of you all shouldn't be moaning for the way that your body was attacked. Mm -hmm. But look at you. Some of you all shouldn't be in your right mind. But look at you. Some of you all's families should be in complete disarray. But look at you. See, I got news for you. Now that you say, he's taking you for a reason. So start something that supports that. And watch him do it. His vow Eternal God, our Father, it's in the precious holy and matchless name of Jesus that we come to say, 